Hi guys, today I'm going to go through momentum. So what is momentum? Well, linear momentum is defined as the product of mass and velocity. Momentum, which has got the units kilogram meters per second, is equal to mass in kilograms times by velocity in meters per second. And it's important just to note that momentum is a vector quantity. So what's the momentum of my car here? Well, my car's got a mass of 5,000 kilograms and it's traveling at a speed of 20 meters per second. So to find the momentum, well, that's dead easy. Just do the mass times velocity. So 5,000 times 20 and you get 100,000 kilogram meters per second. Conservation of momentum. As long as no external forces act, the total momentum of a system is constant. So that means the total initial momentum is equal to the total final momentum. So imagine I had a situation where I've got two balls, one with mass 1 and velocity 1, uh, u1, and mass 2 with uh, a velocity u2. And then finally, maybe they, the balls collide or something happens, there's some kind of event. Well, the mass 1, that would have a final velocity of v1, and mass 2 would have a final velocity of v2. And we know this, the, the total initial momentum is equal to the total final momentum. So we can say m1u1 plus m2u2 is equal to m1v1 plus m2v2. So let's have a look at an example. So a white snooker ball traveling at 3 meters per second hits into a stationary red ball and then moves in the same direction with a speed of 1 meter per second. What's the speed of the red ball after the collision? Each ball has a mass of 0 0.2 kilograms. So the white ball comes in and off they go. So the initial momentum, well that's equal to m1u1 plus m2u2. So it's 0 0.2 times by 3. Remember the white snooker ball has got a mass of 0 0.2 kilograms and is traveling at 3 meters per second. The red snooker ball actually doesn't contribute any momentum because it's at rest, so its velocity is zero. So uh, it doesn't matter what the mass is, uh, so 0 0.2 times by zero is still, still zero. It's not contributing any momentum. So the total momentum to begin with is 0 0.6 kilogram meters per second. Now the final momentum, well that's going to be m1v1 plus m2v2 equals 0 0.6 kilogram meters per second. And let's just put the numbers in. So we know the mass of the snooker balls, which is 0 0.2. So the white snooker ball is now traveling at 1 meters per second. So that's going to be 0 0.2 times by 1. Plus the red snooker ball, well we don't know what that velocity is, so we're just going to leave it as v2. So we've got 0 0.2 times v2 equals 0 0.6 uh, kilogram meters per second. So 0 0.2 plus 0 0.2 times v2 equals 0 0.6. Okay, move that 0 0.2 over to the other side. So I've got 0 0.2 times v2 is equal to 0 0.6 minus 0 0.2. Uh, just to simplify that, so I've got 0 0.2 times v2 is equal to 0 0.4. And then just move the 0 0.2 over to the other side, so I'm dividing by 0 0.2. And I get v2 is equal to 0 0.4 divided by 0 0.2, which gives me 2 meters per second. Okay, cannonball example. A 0 0.5 kilogram cannonball is fired from a 500 kilogram cannon. What is the velocity, sorry, with a velocity of 25 meters per second, what's the recoil velocity of the cannon? So if the cannonball gets shot forwards, the actual cannon itself is going to fly backwards. So the initial momentum, well actually it's zero. Why is it zero? Because nothing's moving. Okay, so this is a bit odd. How are we gonna, how's that going to help us? Well, the final momentum, well, let's just carry on and put our numbers and see what happens. M1V1 plus M2V2 equals zero. So the mass of the cannon, well, that was 500 uh, kilograms. We don't know what its velocity is, so let's just keep that as V1, plus 0 0.5, which was the mass of our cannonball, times by the 25 uh, meters per second that it's going. Now what I'm going to do is shift the momentum of the cannonball over to the other side, so that's why it's become a negative. So I get 500 V1 is equal to minus 12.5 kilogram meters per second. Okay, and if I divide that 12, minus 12.5 
divided by the 500 kilograms, I get minus 0 0.025 meters per second. So that's the recoil velocity. Should have a minus there because it's actually going backwards. So sorry for that little slip. Okay, last example. Okay, a loose train carriage of 500 kilograms traveling at 5 meters per second couples with a second carriage at rest of mass 8,000 kilograms. What's the final speed of the combined carriages? So a little carriage comes in and then couples up together and then hopefully they'll move off. There we go. So that's what's going on. So how are we going to solve this? Well, the initial momentum, well, that's m1u1 plus m2u2, and that's equal to 5,000 times by 5 plus 8,000 times 0. Remember, the second carriage is just there at rest. So we get a total momentum of 25,000 kilogram meters per second. The final momentum, well, that's m1v1 plus m2v2. Now, the carriage is coupled, so we know v1 and it's going to be the same. v1 is equal to v2. And the nice thing about this is we can just put the masses in brackets uh, because we know the velocities are the same. So we'll get m1 plus m2 all in brackets times by v is equal to 25,000 kilogram meters per second. Okay, put the masses in. 5,000 plus 8,000 uh, all combined together times by v is going to give us our, our momentum, the 25,000 kilogram meters per second. So we get 13,000 v equals 25,000 kilogram meters per second. Okay, uh, divide by the 13,000, so 25,000 divided by 13,000, we get 1.5 meters per second. So that's the combined vo uh, velocity of the two carriages. All right, guys, I hope that's been useful. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, always appreciate comments. If there's something you're not sure about, just uh, leave a comment. I'll try and make a video that can help. Bye for now.